Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and today I'm going to keep wrapping up the books that I've been reading in 2021. In this video specifically, I'm going to talk about books 16 through 20. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Like it happened in the previous video, I'm going to be very quick about this first book because it's an Italian um, memoir and it hasn't been translated. I don't think it ever will. So I'll just be very quick. And it is Nessuna Differenza by Beatrice Bruschi. She is an actress in the Italian edition of Scum, SK. A M. It's a TV show that I absolutely adored. It was in my bachelor's thesis. It's a whole thing. It was just fucking incredible. Great LGBT representation and I just I love that show so much. Anyway, she's an actress in that show and um, I found out that she had written a memoir and I was like, okay, it's like a three hours long audiobook or something like that. Let me just listen to it also because I really like her. And it was okay. Basically, this memoir is kind of inspired by Paul Ekman and the fact that people share the same emotions and facial expressions for those emotions, for the basic five emotions, I think. Fear, anger, happiness, that stuff. And so she tells one anecdote, one story from her life for each emotion to kind of explain it and share with the reader what she thinks about certain things. I liked it, kind of. I liked her thoughts. It was nice to hear her speak and express certain things. What I didn't like was the fact that she was referring in a way other people's stories to express a certain emotion. For instance, I think when she was talking about disgust, she addressed the problem of racism because in the show she portrays an Arab woman, an Arab teenage girl. So for that role she met with an Arab family and she got to know them and she talked with them and stuff and so she was enraged and disgusted by the racism that people expressed towards that Arab family, but it wasn't about her, it was about that family. Or for instance, there's another story, I think it was connected with rage or maybe it was sadness because one of her friends came out and she was sad that other people didn't accept her coming out and so her friend had to deal with people not being accepting of her true identity of who she was. But again, it's not about you, it's about your friend who came out. So you're basically using quote unquote other people's stories for your memoir and that didn't quite sit well with me. I don't know if I'm explaining it. I hope I am. Anyway, I didn't quite love it. I didn't quite love what she did. I'm not sure it was all that ethical, maybe. I don't know. I, I had some problems with it. Anyway, it was okay. I gave it three stars. Then I listened to the audiobook of Where We Are by Alison McGee. And this is a YA book where we have two main characters, Micah and Sesame. And Sesame is a teenage girl who lives on her own because she was living with her grandma and then her grandma passed away. So now she's basically on her own and she's still going to school. She's kind of like being homeschooled in a way. She's following classes online and stuff and she also has a job because of course she has to pay for stuff herself and she's friends with Micah and Micah's family is part of a cult and then one day Micah disappeared and Sesame thinks that he's being kidnapped, that he's in this cult with his family and so she wants to try and save him because they had a plan of being together and staying together after high school. 
and she's the only one who thinks that he's actually disappeared, that he's just not away on a family trip during the holidays with his family and she contacts the police and nothing. So she basically looks for him on her own with the help of her best friends. First of all, I really love the audiobook. I loved both narrators for both characters and that was great. It was a nice listening experience. I specifically liked Micah's voice, how it kind of changed throughout the book. The longer he was staying with this cult, the more his thoughts and words were getting repetitive as kind of as if he was being brainwashed. But at the same time, I found the whole idea, the whole concept, the cult specifically, very superficial. Cults are supposed to be led by these charismatic people that have the ability of charm the, the followers, those who will become the followers of the cult. They have to have this story, this genesis basically of their cult with specific rules and beliefs and all of that and there was none of that in this book. M maybe the author chose not to have this information about this made-up cult in her book but I felt like that was the whole point to make Micah's kidnapping and disappearance believable we needed to have like a strong well-built cult and it was not there in the book. So I thought it was going to be a book about a cult and someone who fell prey of the cult, but there, there was basically none of that. It was mostly centered on Sesame trying to find Micah and trying to find out what happened to him. Micah's chapters were very brief and with basically no information at all apart from his thoughts and him being scared and him talking about oh how is it possible that my family um, you know fell for this shit where this cult is nonsense so it would have been good to have like elements to say oh no okay the cult was strong in its beliefs and it was well built and that's why his parents followed this person so that would have made the story as a whole believable and there was none of that so it, again I felt like it was very um, superficial and kind of shallow in this sense, but I still kind of enjoyed it. It had a happy ending, it had like a Christmas vibe in a way. Um, there were some um, side characters that were LGBT and that's always a plus for me, so you know, you're preaching to the choir. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was okay. I wouldn't reread it or re-listen to it or even maybe recommend it to somebody else, but it was okay. It was okay. Then I read The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Eldest Curse series. This is a series that focuses on Magnus and Alec and it's I think it should be more on the not quite young adult, but it, it should lean towards the new adult age target because there, there should be some things that are a little bit more explicit. I don't think there were in this book, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. Anyway, this was just fantastic. <laughs> I fucking loved it. I mean, it's Magnus and Alec, they're my favorite characters in the Mortal Instruments series. I don't think it's a secret. I mean, Magnus is just a fucking treasure and I just love the relationship between him and, and Alec. They're just two cuties and I love them together. And it, it's such though a complex relationship because you have a mortal with an immortal. So, you know, there there is a lot to unpack there and to worry about. So, you know, it's, it's deeper than what it might seem. Anyway, I loved being back in a Cassie Clare book. I loved the descriptions. I loved the dialogue, the banter, just Magnus being Magnus. Let me just tell you something about the plot. Just so I'm not here for 25 minutes or whatever, just gushing about Malik. This 
take place after the events of City of Glass, after the OG Mortal Instruments trilogy, you know, after the third book in that Mortal Instruments series. And Alec and Magnus decide to go on a vacation to finally spend some time alone together in a romantic setting. Magnus takes Alec to Paris, but there they hear this rumor that someone is going around saying that Magnus Bane has founded a cult called the Crimson Hand. And I think that this cult was creating problems for the Downworlders specifically. And so Magnus and Alec set out to try and understand what's happening before the Shadow Hunters get involved because the Shadow Hunters can be just, you know, a little bit racist when it comes to Downworlders and of course if someone is saying that Magnus is you know the founder of this cult is the lead of this cult then the shadow hunters will intervene and take action against Magnus and of course that cannot happen because we all love Magnus and Alec love Magnus and that's why he goes along with his boyfriend to try and fix the situation. What else can I say? I fucking adored this book. It was just incredible. I loved every single page of it. I devoured it and I cannot wait to read the next installment in the series because th there's always room for Magnus and Alec, okay? And uh, time needs to be found. To continue on with this trilogy and I haven't yet but, but but I will. I don't know if the third one has come out yet. <sighs> I can't remember but if it has it will be read sometime soon. I, uh, 2022 th that's the year but it's it's happening and I loved it and of course it's five gigantic shining stars. In the meantime, I was listening to the audiobook of A Woman Is No Man by Etaf Room. This is a literary fiction book that follows two different storylines. One is set in the past, one is set in the present. In the past, our main character is Ezra. She is an Arab young girl who is getting married to Adam. It's an arranged marriage so that she can move with Adam to the United States and live in Brooklyn and, you know, create a family with him. And the storyline in the present revolves around Dea. She is Ezra's daughter. Dea lost both her parents when she was still very young, so she's currently living in Brooklyn with her three sisters and with her grandparents. We're now starting to have her meet with suitors for an arranged marriage because that's how it works in their culture. Dea receives a letter or a postcard from someone who knew her mom, so she starts meeting with this person and of course stuff comes to light. Once again I sound like a broken record but the three narrators were perfect, were just incredible, they perfectly fit the story and I think they are the main reason why I kept listening to this book because I was struggling. I was really struggling. I understand, I do. I understand the point of this book. The author wanted to show how in certain cultures and in certain environments women truly have no power whatsoever. They have to do whatever their husbands or fathers want and they have no escape, no freedom whatsoever and it's tough to read and it's disgusting. It, it really makes me hate men even more than what I already do because I don't have all this sympathy towards men for many reasons. But, and I cannot believe that I'm saying this, I think the author took it too far. She really took it too far. You can't have a whole book that is so black and white where there is no redemption whatsoever for any male figure that appears in the book. I understand what you're trying to do as an author, as someone who wants to give a message, as someone who wants to portray a certain culture, a certain environment, as I've said, it's a problem. Women in general and even more in those cultures and environments have it really fucking hard. 
you know? And it's something that all women are aware of and we deal with it, we struggle with it every single fucking day. But at the same time, because of racism, because of stereotypes, you can't have a whole culture, a whole population condemned because all of the men in that culture, you're portraying them in that way, like animals that have no fucking control, like they're all fucking terrible human beings. I can't believe that all men are like that. I can't, I don't want to. And I know that that's not the case because we've seen Arab men that are, I don't know, more enlightened, less set in the old ways, who treat their women with respect. So there are different shades, ways of being, even if you like belong to the same macro group, to the same culture. And I think it's your responsibility, since you're writing this story, to have that, even if in a minimal part, you have to have that in your book. You can't completely avoid it and portray all men like fucking animals that need to be <laughs> killed, you know, because of how brutal and disgusting they are with the women in their lives. So that was just a, a, a big no for me. Again, I understand what you were trying to do, but it's a delicate topic. It's a sensitive issue in our society. Racism is a big thing. Also, violence against women, of course, <laughs> totally, but you, you have to be careful with how you deal with it. And I don't think the author thought about that through as much as she should have. That's just my opinion. I might be completely wrong, but that's just what I thought when I was listening to the book. I, I don't think the man who did those things in this book should have had a chance to redeem themselves because they were just fucking brutes, but have other men who think in a different way, who are different, who show people that Arab men can be different. Y you gotta have that in your book. And there was none of that. And that was pretty um disappointing. Um, so in the end, for how just tragic and black and white it was, I gave it 2.5 stars. I had to take a quick break and the light went away because I am that lucky, but that's why we have the ring light, isn't it? So, the very last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. And let me tell you, this is going to be, I mean, this is, and it is going to be one of my favorite books that I've read this year. One of my favorite books of 2021, probably one of my favorite books of all times because I just loved it like that much. I loved it viciously, utterly, totally, wholeheartedly because it was just that good. This is a YA book about a girl named Nora O'Malley who is going to the bank to um, deposit some money with her girlfriend and her ex-boyfriend. That's a very weird trio, but it all makes sense if you read the book. She's going to deposit some money, but while they're at the bank, some robbers come in and they find themselves hostages of this robbery. What the hostages don't know is that Nora O'Malley is not the real name of this girl. She has a troubled past where lots of stuff went down and because of that she has a set of abilities that will very much come in handy to try and figure out how to fix the situation, how to escape without them getting hurt, how she and her girlfriend and the ex-boyfriend who is also her best friend can escape the situation. Let me tell you, there is just so much that goes on in this book, so much more that I can <laughs> summarize in these few minutes. There is a storyline in the present where they're at the bank and trying to deal with the situation. And there are also chapters 
that are flashbacks of the past lives of Nora O'Malley where she helped her mom con different men to get rich and she had different identities throughout time every time she had to be someone else learn how to behave in a different way how to charm a man how to hold knives how to protect herself how to lie and con and all that stuff and it just gets so dark and twisted trigger warning for abuse domestic violence rape or better sexual violence in a way there are guns arms of different kinds and there's also the sweetest most pure wonderful incredible relationship between Nora and Iris who didn't know about her past and when she finds out that's a whole thing that I'm not gonna tell you about I, I really really loved Iris she was just so incredible and I just I I loved this book with all my heart all the themes that are present and unpacked throughout the book are dealt with such care in an incredible emotional heartfelt way it's diverse it's queer it, it was just so much the banter the dialogues were amazing i just loved this book wholeheartedly so much it gave me money heist vibes both for the bank heist part of the book but also for the fact that it is both funny and dark and complicated and it perfectly interweaves present and past it never loses track of what it's doing the story makes sense and i just loved it the conclusion was amazing and it's five ten a hundred stars i loved it so much and i recommend it to anyone who wants to read a fucking great book this was it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed watching it please let me know in the comments if you have read or want to read any of these books please let me know if you have read the girls have been or if i've caught your interest and now you want to read it please 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 um let me know because i'm curious and i want people to read this book because i'm sure that anyone who reads it would love it and i've heard only amazing things so i'm not the only one um, also, please subscribe if you haven't, follow me on the social medias, let's be friends, let's talk about books, um, leave a comment because you guys know that I always appreciate when you leave a comment. Thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you very soon with another one. Warm hugs! <laughs>